Uh, greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility located outside of Delmont, Pennsylvania. And as for the listeners of this podcast, you know that at Seclair we make a specialty in treating people, not necessarily diagnoses. And one of the purposes of these weekly educational rounds is not only to introduce some type of tangible real life concept into your life that you can actually use. It's also to highlight some of the uh, staff members and faculty members here at Seclair and gain a little bit of clarity into their life and how they take their own vision, combine it with Seclair's and put it out into the world and positively impact other people's lives. I'm Jim Ellermeyer, I'm a behavioral health therapist and today, as always, I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be Ryan Bingham, a physician assistant student from Chatham University. And on my right? James Buckley, a musical director here at Seclair. So for those, we're going to be posting the uh, podcast shortly. This is the uh, part two of our interview with James Buckley. And last week we talked a little bit about some of his transition from our early years, the, the formative years, and the person that he's here today. And uh, James, one of the, I believe, I've known you long enough, one of the primary missions and focuses of your life is that it's not all about yourself anymore, that it's about other people. Absolutely. And uh, I, I've uh, developed that over the years and, you know, uh, it, it's just been uh, a, a part of my, my uh, evolution, so to speak. Actually, I had someone said something about, uh, you know, some kind of something in the Bible that says women must serve men and blah, blah, blah. And they, they said, uh, I have to take care, I have to do it for myself first, and then, then I'll do it for others. And I said, well, I'm just the opposite. I'd rather do things for others and then save myself for last. So if we're lining up at the uh, Thanksgiving line for, for you know, the buffet, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll let everybody else go, then I'll go last. There'll be plenty left. Yeah, there'll be plenty left, yeah. So one of the things here that uh, we do at Seclair is help people refocus their lives a bit. There's, People come here with perhaps some uh, misplaced energy, some misspent energy, and everyone only has so much. So what we help people do is determine what's really important in their lives. Uh, not the people, places, things, circumstances, situations, which they want to do, which they strive to believe that would make them feel better. However, quite often, James, what we do is we ask people, if everything was stripped away from you, your health, your wealth, your education, who would be standing with you at the end? And those are, those are the... Those are the people, those are the core values that we ask to have people to reinforce and add to in their lives. So tell, tell us a little bit about how you refocused in your own life. Well, I uh, was, uh, you know, uh, exposed myself to a lot of uh, uh, sticky situations at many times and luckily survived all those things. And it was only as I was getting older, I had more time, my life was slowing down, but I had more time to think about all the things that I had done and then sort of analyze it and, you know, reprocess it. And I came to realize that as time went on that I was, uh, you know, I was much happier uh, being unselfish and selfish and, uh, you know, doing things that were for me, uh, although I wasn't really bad on that side. But, but I felt the more I was unselfish, the happier I became. And for some people, Ryan, they call that a moment of clarity. Okay, when, when it's right in front of you and you can see clearly what is important and sometimes what happens is our desires uh, overwhelm, our, overwhelm our needs. Okay? And when we begin to pursue those desires, uh, those desires excuse me, to the uh, detriment of having our needs met and the needs met of others, then things can go south. Could you address that a little bit? Well, some might call that selfishness. So when we, uh, as an individual, we let our own personal desires overwhelm anything else in our life, we get out of balance. And I think selfishness starts creeping in. And certainly we have to look after ourselves, and we have to look after our own needs. However, to have a balanced life, you know, one must always be aware of what's going on. We must be aware of what's going on around us and the people around us that are important. You Indeed. can't ignore that. Indeed. Yeah. So why don't you, could you share with us a few of your moments of clarity, James? Uh, let's see. Uh, I would say uh, 
a lot of them have been smaller kind of little things that happened during the day that have awoken me, but uh, I'm trying to find something that I can specifically talk about that was a real big uh, game changer. But I, I think one of them was uh, I had uh, stopped playing music for uh, over 20 years. Mm -hmm. So I, I played and I did the music thing and for all the reasons that kids, you know, in their 20s play music and, you know, uh, so, and I did it and then I was done. <laughs> and as my nature is, I always try to experience as much as I can. So usually I'll do something to do it and then I'll say, oh, that was fun. All right, now it's time to do something else. My son's the same way, he does that too. But, so it was like over 20 years when I, I had stopped completely. I didn't even listen to music. I didn't listen, I didn't play, nothing. No writing, no singing, nothing. After a lifetime of that. And uh, I got asked to participate in a, uh, in a uh, benefit playing musically. And I hadn't done it in a long time, but someone had heard some old music that I had done and says, you should open up for us and we're doing a musical benefit for somebody. And he, he just happened to have a, a brain tumor and uh, was a very successful businessman. And I said, sure, I, I'll do it. You know, they talked me into it. <laughs> but the epiphany was when I did it, I didn't realize what was happening here, that I was actually helping somebody with my music as opposed to the old days where it was entertainment and having fun and, you know, party and all that stuff. And I realized, hey, you know, I can maybe use this talent for something good. So what you're telling us is you used your music rather as a source of pleasure for yourself, but as a vehicle in which you could reach out to others. Yeah, yeah, and I, I realized, you know what, I, how, how can I, you know, deny the talent that was given to me to do this uh, by, you know, and, and not give it to others to enjoy if I can do some good. And in that case, it was something good. And I, you know, it just gave me a different feeling. Like the very first time I appeared on stage back in the 70s, uh, it was just, I mean, I was, I could, I could float home. I was so, so, you know, excited about it. I said, this is the greatest thing in the world, you know? Euphoria. Because, yeah, it was euphoria. But, but this time, when I went out and did this benefit, I said it again. I said, this is the greatest thing in the world. And not because it was for me, it was because I was doing something for somebody else that was in need. And that, that got me back into it again. And I said, you know, I'm going to do this again, but I'm going to do it with a stipulation that I give it back. Indeed. So, and Ryan is a physician assistant student. I'm sure that you can differentiate the difference between merely a healthcare professional and a healer. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, uh... You know, lately I've been, uh, I've attended a lecture recently this week and then also being around here at Seclair and interacting with the different therapists, Dr. Chaudhry and the physician assistants. I've really learned the, the importance of looking at patients as, as fellow human beings and not as a diagnosis or not as a disease, but looking at them as a human being and helping them to, with whatever challenge that they're facing uh, in, the, in the area of healthcare. And that's really... That is so important, and Jim and I have seen that same response many times, uh -huh. uh, and, and, and that's good because what you're gaining from here, which is what you hope every physician, assistant, and doctor can, can take and have that in their toolbox to help their patients is so valuable uh, because, you know, patients are, they're a vulnerable position, you know, when they come and see a doctor. So... You know, and, and if you're aware of that and can treat them uh, that way, you know, and say, you know, I understand how you, how you feel and, and, and you know, and, and just show, show some compassion, the chances of healing just get lifted up and boosted a bit from that because they actually believe that, you know, hey, maybe there is a chance I can heal because I believe in myself. So you have to, I think those tools are very valuable and, and I wish, uh, you know, in all, all you know, careers and so forth, the workplace or whatever you have, I mean, if more people would employ some of these things, we'd probably have a better world than we do. Yeah, so what you're talking about, James, is before you maybe perhaps viewed yourself as an entertainer. And however, now you're more, 
you develop more of a presence with your audience. Yeah, and I think it's a it's a healing, more of a healing thing in that sense. Uh, so it, you know, that's great, you know, because uh, I, I, that, that's such a reward and a turnaround. And when you see successes, you say, hey, I must be doing something right here. So you know? could you go a little further with that with us? Well, you know, I, uh, I, I've, I've worked with some people that were having difficulties and I've actually been able to hear about their successes later because I don't always see that happen. I only go and do what I do and then I hear about how they're doing later sometimes. Not always, most of the time I don't. But when I do, I, I say, oh, well, that's great to hear that. It's not that I need the pat on the back, it's just to know that something's working. You know, and it's not just me, it's me and other things that are all working to get that person to feel good about themselves. And, and so that's why I keep doing this and I feel this is, this is really where I should be at in my life. Well, I've been around you enough, James. I one of your particular talents that I've always admired is your ability to pick up on a theme when we're maybe engaged in a group process and during that group process, Sometimes I kind of throw you in the water and <laughs> yeah. uh, ask you to come up with a, with some type of a themed song at the end, and you've never failed me that. Yeah, you do that. And you know what? And that's fine. I love it. I love doing that because, and I, I go back to my youth as a kid. I could be walking down the street, and I could see a big yellow truck go by, and I, I'd, I'd be singing in my head, you know, there goes that big yellow truck rolling down the road. You know, I, I mean, it just... It, everything I saw, I would sing about. Yeah, you know, uh, so you know, it, it's more of a natural thing for me to do. So it's and, and you know, it's amazing because you hear like the the, the rap and the hip hop guys, they they come up and they do these things and they say, wow, how could, how could they think so fast like that? But it, it is possible, and uh, you know, so I, I take it and uh, use that to try to to try to create something that fits what's going on. So if we're in with a group and we're talking about a particular subject and instead of saying does somebody write a song about that well bingo I got one <laughs> and I'll just make it up so it fits the mood and, I, and sometimes I'll use what people actually say and that's pretty cool because I take their own lines and use them back in the song again so what many people attempt to do in their lives is to force or impose their agenda on others much like um, I've been involved with physicians that have done the same thing. When a person comes in, they present with X, and that's all they hear. And they say, okay, well, A, B, C, and D. Here's, here's, here's what's in the box. Here's what we give you. And, you. and you walk out the door. Rather than maybe be a bit more flexible and try to understand the whole picture rather than just the bullet points. Yeah. I think that, the, you know, going to that, I think that part of the the changes in healthcare today and all the pressures have forced a lot of doctors not to have time to, to do that, you know. Uh, my doctor, she, she does that, she does take the time and it's great to see that because that means a lot. Uh, how does the dollars and cents add up for that? I don't know, you know, how that works in reality, but it's something that I think if you're looking at it as as a profit-making uh, thing versus a healing thing, the two are they're two, two different things, you know. So if we focus on the healing, then we can do these practices, tools that we have. If we focus on cost, then that's when we lose it. Yeah. When it comes to healthcare as a as a new provider, uh, hopefully soon to be a certified provider, I feel that, like you were saying, James, if we if we look at the interests of our patient and treat our patients and look to be the best, to offer the best health care, whatever that area of medicine is, in this case it's a clarion psychiatrics, the dollars and cents will take care of itself. And, uh, you know, Dr. Chaudhary kind of sets the tone for Seclair, and I think it was just yesterday actually in a group where he talked about it might take sometimes three to six months for him to arrive at an appropriate and accurate diagnosis. And, that's because he's peeling back the layers and he's getting to know that person. And uh, not just, like you were saying, at the onset of a, of a meeting or an interaction with a patient, putting them in a box, immediately labeling them, putting them in a box, applying what you want to do as a plan instead of customizing it completely to the individual. So. 
Yeah, and I think a lot of that too is when they put them in the box, they say, okay, you're, if you're in this box, then you need this medication, yeah. this medication, and this medication. And, but if you take them out of that box and you say, let's try to get away from the medication part and, and focus more on maybe other things that might help you not need those medications as much or not at all and focus on things you can self-help, you know. And I think that's really what we do is we, we and, and tell me if I'm wrong, but I think we teach people how to help themselves. Indeed. Yeah. Oh, I've, many times I've heard, we, we train people to be their own therapist. I've heard Jim yeah. say that many times. And you know what's funny is when I see people in, in group and they start talking about it and their patients, they are now the teachers too. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, they'll hear somebody else tell, a, tell their problem and they'll say, well, you know what I did? And you know it really works for me, and they start becoming a teacher. When I see that, I say, uh, you know, great, this is good, this is good stuff, because someone is, is so confident in what they've learned that they're actually going to give advice to somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's yeah. valuable advice because it's something that maybe worked for them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope none of us ever get so arrogant that we believe that we can't learn from, oh, from another person. Like I always person. says, you know, when you stop learning, you know, not, you know nothing. And that's, yeah. and that's having that beginner's mind. That's having that open mind. And so the people who are viewing this uh, podcast might wonder, what the heck does this have to do to me? Here's a master <laughs> musician. Here's a therapist. Here's a prescriber. So however, you can be that healer in other people's lives too, just simply by your presence. One of the biggest part of life is simply showing up. You always don't need to have to give people sympathy or provide whatever just to be with, to be with someone, to know that... They'll, they can count on you to have some loyalty and dependability. And the idea is is to not only talk the talk in your life, the, talk, the deal is to walk the walk. So are there, be, be able to share people in your life things that you wouldn't be embarrassed for them to find out, okay? What are your values? It's okay, it's okay to have them and to be proud of them. Uh, you can be you can be a cash register person at a store checking someone out and just simply by giving someone a smile or a, or a thank you would be a great or a great blessing you can be a healer there to be a, to have a small child when you're walking through a store and quite often children do smile at people and just the smile back oh that's beautiful is is just simply it, 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 it doesn't cost anything <laughs> And there's that healing, there's that human connection. Everyone out there watching this podcast is capable of having that human connection, connecting with the other human being. Quite often, James, what I'll do is I'll, I'll take the students out to a larger type of store. And uh, I'll say, before I go in, I'll say, okay, we're going to walk through the store. I want you to be the observer. I want you to look to see how many people are smiling. I want to see how many people actually raise their eyes. I want to see how many people actually make contact with other people. And I'm going to, I'm going to approach people and I'm going to speak to them. I'm going to say hello and I want you to watch their reactions. I think that's incredible and it's, it's so true. It's, we all have this ability to do this. And you know what, you, you may just, for that brief moment, uh, interrupt someone's negative thinking just by a simple smile and uh, acknowledgement or, you know, how are you, you know, hi, <laughs> two letters, I mean one word. So the way, yeah. the way that you do this is through, is through your music. Yeah, and, and uh, I, I connect with people that, this way and I, I feel that's, that's good, you know, because I love to hear that when I do. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, it, it, it's very uh, overwhelming to me that I feel, wow, I, I've actually connected with someone in such a strong way they're crying or, you know, they're emotionally moved by it. But, you know, it ends up being support for them in, in the end. And, and I think that's a good thing. And uh, I just... That, that, that's what keeps me doing it. The ability to make others smile, just to let them know that you care. Even if you just can't, if you can't deal with what their problem is right now, the fact that you are present and aware is a great deal. And so physicians can't cure everything, can they? No, no. Neither can therapists and, and neither right. can musicians. So however, we can be there. Quite often what I'll tell people, James, is I may not have any answers, I'm always willing. Yeah, and that, that's really important. I mean, that's probably your, your biggest value is, you know, you, you're there to listen. And people like to be listened to. Indeed. 
Uh, there's everyone out there who really likes to be heard. And the fact that saying, I don't know, is, a, is an acceptable, it's a great answer. Mm -hmm. So if you were going to someone, a doctor or a car mechanic or whatever, would you rather hear somebody say, James, I don't know, however, I'll, I'll look into it, or would you rather hear some type of gobbledygook made up type of thing? Yeah, I really don't care for that. I don't practice that myself. If, if I don't know the answer, I'll tell them I don't know, mm -hmm. and I say, but I'll try to find the answer for you, or I'll send you to someone that, that might have the answer or call this person, but I will never give them an answer that I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, because that doubt. That wouldn't be true to myself, not not only then, but you know that that would be just. I, I would not feel good. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night, actually, because I'm very self conscious of that. So I got to be careful with what I say. And if someone asks me, I say, you know, I really don't know about that, but let's see if we can find out. And you know, that that's that's the way it works. You you dig and dig and dig until you find out what the where you can get the answer to the question. So uh, Ryan, I'm going to call out a portion of the medical community right now. Okay. And I can only speak from my own experience when I have asked people for a second opinion or a referral, they're insulted. Or if I would uh, perhaps try to have them look at things another way, uh, I'm viewed as a less than, how dare you question my authority yeah. or yeah. intelligence. I think it's a natural human reaction to kind of sometimes be defensive. Um, it might show a lack of maturity on the part of that particular provider. Maybe they're new in the field, and so they're not comfortable with, with being questioned. But I think every patient deserves the, the highest level of care. And if that means a second or a third look, then that's what that patient deserves. Yeah, and, yeah. and as healthcare providers, yeah. we need... We, the healthcare model is built around a team, right? Right. And it's teamwork. And... And uh, no one person has all the answers or has the treatment. It's, it's a team effort. And I think what I was going to say was uh, if, if you're confident in the answer that you gave them, you don't have to worry about how many opinions you get. Yeah. Uh, you would, I would feel it, if it was me, I would encourage them. I would say, yes, please do that. And we'll see what happens. But I would encourage it. And I think patients... Uh, maybe might be changing, and I know what you're saying. Sometimes they take offense to that, but I think you're just saying, you know, if you say to them, you know, I want to make sure that we do the best thing that available for you, and a uh, second opinion is not going to hurt. Our health and wellness are our responsibilities, absolutely, and no one else's. Right. So right. we exactly. want to get out of the Point. mindset is is that. When we go to an auto mechanic or when we go to an attorney or when we go to a doctor or when we go to a therapist or when we take music lessons, we sometimes get those roles reversed. Those people are working for us. We're not working for them. So that's that's kind of a situation that gets reversed often. In it does, yeah. And it, you know, I think that uh, the, the, I think things are changing now and people are a little bit more conscious of their own health and they're not going to settle for the first answer that they get all the time. Uh, and, and that's a really healthy way to, to approach it and, you know, and, and get confirmation and, and, you know, see if anybody else agrees or, you know, we have all the resources out there. Lord knows there's enough information out there that, that we can get to where we need to get to and see what works. Uh, my sister in Florida, you know, she has, uh, she has lung cancer. And she did the chemo and the radiation stuff. And, you know, it was up and down. And, of course, she felt terrible, you know, after that kind of treatment. But now she's into the immune uh, building therapy. Mm -hmm. And she's doing real well with that. So we kind of take a different look at it and say, well, instead of this method, we'll try this method. And for some, it's been, it is successful. You can always look for new ways. Here at Seclair, we, we try to treat, like as we said before, treat in a way that we can give them the information they need to help themselves when they walk out the door. The best thing, the, the thing that we want to see is patients not come back. <laughs> so that means that they're, they're, they're doing all right with themselves. And if they, have, they slip and fall, yeah, come on. We'll, we'll come back for a tune-up. Come back for a tune-up, yeah six month uh, inspection and <laughs> we're fortunate enough to be in a position where we're one of the 
the only professions where we attempt to work ourselves out of a job. <laughs> so to summarize, so to summarize our today's podcast, we started off by talking about core values. We talking about what's really important in your life, having moments of clarity, and really what we discussed the three of us was that every single human being on earth has different uh, talents, gifts, and abilities, different sizes, shapes, and colors, and every single person has them. So my suggestion would be to learn identify and develop your own. James's happens to be music, mine happens to be therapy, um, Mr. Ryan happens to be um, medic medicine, so that type of field. So I challenge everyone out there to find your gifts, talents, and abilities and use them to be the healer in someone else's life. And as always, at the end of every podcast, we offer a free prescription, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we ask that you fish with us. Do a kindness for yourself, do a kindness for another. Forgive yourself and forgive an enemy. Namaste. Have a good day.